got it upside down. Hey, John! Hey, look! Wait! Hey! You got it upside down. Huh? Something we always try to focus on here is that we should always be trying to do something new. Whether it's a new furniture design, or a new woodworking technique, or even just a new stupid joke in a video, we always want to be offering something new. So I tried to emphasize that idea when designing and building this table, which is our newest set of Four Eyes Furniture plans, and they're available right now on our website. We're calling this one the Longview Dining Table, and it's the first piece of furniture I've ever designed and made with the sole purpose of it being used in my own home. Not sure if that means anything, but it's a new concept for me. See where we're going here? On top of all that, with this set of plans, I wanted to try some new techniques that we haven't done previously, but we'll get into all of that as we go along. For now, let's jump into some building, and so far I've broken down the material for my base assemblies, and I'm getting ready to start shaping the individual parts. And you've probably noticed I'm using templates here, which we offer as an option to purchase along with the digital plans. We also provide SVG and PDF versions of all the templates so that you can make them yourself either by hand, or if you have access to a CNC router like an X-Carve, you can let a machine do the tedious work. All you have to do is sit back and relax. Honestly, a small CNC router really changed my workflow for the better when I first started using one. So if you're interested, I'll put a link in the description to the X-Carve for more info. So with all of my individual parts ready, I could start cutting the joinery, and this is where I employ one of our multiple jigs for this piece. Table saw sleds are something I use often, and if you've watched any of our videos or purchased any of our other furniture plans, you'll know how useful these can be. Technically not a new idea for me, but because I don't keep most of the sleds from my previous projects, each one is new, so there's that. The base is made up of four separate leg sub-assemblies, which are then mitered and joined together into two bases that are connected by stretchers that run the length of the table. So once all of the joints were cut and I cut in some dominoes, I was ready for the first glue up. And of course, we know not everyone has a domino, so we always talk about alternative joinery methods in our plans. With the four legs sub-assemblies complete, I could once again use a table saw sled to cut them to length with the proper angle on the top to match the horizontal upper stretcher that will connect to the tabletop. These are a simple part of the build as there isn't any fancy joinery or transitions. It's really just a butt joint at an angle. At this point, I have each half of the two base assemblies complete, and we can get into some of the fun stuff. I needed to cut a bevel onto the ends of the upper and lower parts of each leg subassembly in order to join them together, and I wanted the angle between them to be 112.5 degrees, because 112.5 is a really good amount of degrees. To do this, I had to cut a bevel onto each leg subassembly, so once again, I used a table saw sled to get this done. From here, 
here, I could take these leg sub-assemblies, add in some dominoes and a glue up, and you get two full-blown table bases out of it. Clamping miter joints like this can sometimes be tricky, but with some strategically placed clamping blocks and a little bit of planning, it went together pretty easily. Okay, remember at the beginning of the video where I was going on and on about doing new things? Well, here is the first big one. I needed to figure out a way to cut the joint to connect the long stretchers to the base assemblies. I wanted to keep it fairly simple and approachable for people to try, but still be something interesting to do. So I came up with a router jig to essentially cut a dado down the center of the miter joints on the base assemblies. And we dedicated an entire chapter to making this jig in the plans so it's easy to follow along. Once I had it figured out, it's a pretty easy jig to make and it worked exactly as I'd hoped. So I was able to get nicely cut and perfectly fitting joints at all four miters. So with those joints cut, I just needed to cut and shape the long stretchers before gluing them in place. The bottom one got a subtle curve while I kept the top one straight. Pretty simple. and I also added an edge detail to the vertical leg portions of each base. With all of that done, we could glue up the entire table base, which was simple enough using some long pipe clamps and some clamping blocks to be sure we were getting even clamping pressure at the center of the joints. So now that the table base was done and out of the way, I needed one more thing, which is crucial to any dining table, and that's the table. So Chris did me a solid and did some of the work to get the well, panel. I mean, most of the work. Okay. So basically what happened was we had 14 inch boards, but our joiner's only eight inches. So in order to be able to make the tabletop, we couldn't join anything, which means. Okay, anyway, what Chris was trying to say was we did a big panel glue up and we did it in sections to make sure we got all the glue joints nice and tight. So with a big panel, I could start working on some of the details of the tabletop. And the main detail is that each edge of the top has a subtle curve to it. One of the things I wanted to do throughout this piece is mix together angles and curves in a recurring way. So while I'm working on the tabletop curves, I can also work on this curve. And we can talk about this month's feature viewer project, which comes from Christopher Stepanian. 
Christopher made this really cool chair, which was inspired by some of the architecture at the Portland Japanese Gardens in Oregon. He made it for an object design class, and this is the first piece of furniture he ever built. I wish I could say my first piece of furniture looked this good. If you want to see more pictures and read more about this piece, go check out our website, which we'll link to in the description. We're going to be featuring a new project each month, and we're happy to be using Squarespace to help us build the website. Both Chris and I have been using Squarespace to build and maintain our websites for years now, and honestly it's one of the best choices we made when starting our businesses. At the time, I had no idea what I needed to do to build a website, but Squarespace makes it super easy to get up and running with plenty of professional looking templates to choose from, as well as making things like purchasing domains really simple. Squarespace also has plenty of e-commerce tools to help you grow your business, things like inventory management, a simple and secure checkout process, and unlimited products allow us to easily manage online transactions and not get bogged down with mundane tasks so that we can devote more time to doing the things we enjoy, like making a new dining table or a cool lounge chair. So if you're thinking about starting a website, or even if you already have one, Go check out Squarespace to see if it might be a better option for you. Head over to squarespace.com slash four eyes for a free trial. Then when you're ready to launch, use the offer code four eyes to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right. Thanks Squarespace. And if you want to have one of your projects featured as well, check out the link in the description for more details. So once I marked out where I wanted the curves, I could cut them out close to the line with a jigsaw. From there, the curves could either be sanded smooth by hand, or once again, templates could be utilized here to get a really clean and even result. The last detail on this piece, and maybe the one I was most excited about, was the big bevel on the underside of the table. Now I'm a sucker for a steep bevel, but doing one on a piece this size, and especially one on a piece this size with a curve can be pretty tricky. So I decided to once again try something new and make another router jig to help with this. I made this router jig to hold my router at an angle and right along the edge of the table. It took a few passes on each side but it worked like a charm and the bevel came out great. Of course, there are other ways to accomplish this, which we talk about in the plans, or you could opt for a more standard bevel angle and use a router bit for this. But you know what they say, the bevel is in the details. At this point, the table is pretty much done. I just needed to attach the base to the top with some threaded inserts and machine screws, then sand and add some finish, and this one was ready to lay down on. I mean, eat off of. Thanks again for watching. Check out the link to our plans in the description if you're interested in building this table too. 
And of course, send us a picture if you do. 